Hey, y'all, this is Curtis Grimes, and I want to give a shout out and a special thank you to everyone associated with TNC Radio.live. Hello, and welcome to TNC Radio.live. This is Trucker's Life Radio. And now here's your host, Ron Frazier. Welcome to Trucker's Life Radio on TNC Radio.live. I'm your host, Ron Frazier. Before we begin, I want to encourage those of you who are joining us for the first time uh, here on the radio program uh, that this radio program is dedicated to help drivers on life's highway. So as we begin our program, I want to encourage you to contact us at Truckers Life at tncradio.live should you have any questions about what you hear during this program or any program and even the possibility that you may have a story of your own that you would like to share with us. So remember, that's Trucker's Life at tncradio.live. On today's program, we have Ken Eakins, who is a TFC Global District Manager in the Indianapolis, Illinois region. Ken, uh, we want to thank you for joining us and uh, being part of this radio program. You're welcome. So, Ken, here's the million-dollar question. Who is Ken Eakins? Tell us a little bit of your story. Yeah, I grew up in a rural town in Indiana, northwest Indiana, called Lowell, Indiana. I live in Cedar Lake now after I got out of the service. All right, uh, between reserves and active duty, I spent 14 years in. Uh, I wound up putting 13 and a half years in as a truck driver six of which I own my own rig. And I wound up, when I got saved, I wound up getting the earning to to learn more about Jesus and God and the Bible. And I wound up going to college. And at first it was just to do it for myself. And God had other plans for me. And now I'm a TSC chaplain. You know, I finished college, got a bachelor's degree in religion and you know, and here I am to this day. Ken, that's that's quite a story. You, uh, <clears throat> what what sent you into the military? Uh, yeah, I wanted to get out of the area for one. Uh, you know, and I, my dad always told me stories about him when he was in Korea and uh, stuff. So I'm like, you know, I want to I want to go in, and I spent. The 14 years in, most, I only had act five active, but the rest was all reserves. But uh, I just wanted to go in and see what it was like. Okay. Ken, you, you shared with me and some of our staff that you have struggled with PTSD. And what I'd like you to do is, is define that for me. You know, right. For those people yeah. out there who don't know what that is, uh, tell us what it is. Yeah, you know, it's post-traumatic stress disorder, and how my the way mine works is a little different than some of the others. Because I was actually a welder in the army, and then I switched to being an infantryman. When I got to Fort Campbell, they stuck me in aviation maintenance instead of an infantry unit. You know, some of the kids that I went to infantry school with were killed over in Desert Storm. And I, sh- I felt that I should have been with them. Where So I, my, my PTSD is more of a guilt because I wasn't with some of the soldiers that I went to school with. So my PTSD is basically from guilt. And okay, I, I-, I, run, I run from it. I, I think that's the you know common response. But can tell me how? When did the onslaught of that begin? When did you begin to realize you had PTSD? Well, I'd have to say after I got off of active du- active duty, because uh, if if you weren't in combat or anything, I wouldn't even talk say hi to you. All right, if you didn't, you know, I ignored people right and left. Uh, I tried the nine to five jobs and stuff, didn't like it and stuff. I, you know, uh, I was always fighting and arguing with my family, you know, friends I'd always get into arguments with, uh, 
uh, back then too, I, I drank and stuff and I'd go in this one bar by the house and all of a sudden everybody clear out of it. You know, they were afraid to be around me that I'd lose, lose my temper or control. Hmm. Yeah. Just one little thing would just set me off in a frenzy. Ken, would you say, Ken, that this drove you into driving truck? Uh, partially. Uh, I just, I didn't like being around people a lot. So I went into truck driving because in a, a truck, I'm by myself. The only time I have to deal with people is when they're loading my tr truck or unloading it. So the majority of the time, I was out there by myself. Did, didn't you feel isolated, though? Didn't you feel a sense of uh, maybe a little bit of depression or something, even being isolated like that, which is your preference? Mm -hmm. But did, didn't you have a sense of, wow, you know, there's just nobody who cares? Yeah, and that's that's one of the reasons why I got into it. No, I felt like nobody cared about it, about me or stuff and you know the VA wasn't really doing much for for us at that time you know they were they'd just give you medication and tell you have a nice day and they wanted you to be they want they basically got you hooked on drugs and then they blame that oh you're a drug addict hmm. and stuff and they don't want to do nothing for you okay now that you've told us what it is Take and share with us, who are the victims of PTSD and how does it affect them? How did it affect, how does it affect them and how did it affect you? Yeah, you know, the PTSD, well, the way it, 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 it pushes you away from everybody. All right. When you, when you have it, all right, you, you don't want, you want to be isolated. You don't want to be around people because you're afraid you're going to go off. And you just you just want you just want to stay away from them so that doesn't happen and stuff. You don't you know somebody could say the wrong words and that's it. And you just you just want to go off, be by yourself. And it took years. Uh, if it wasn't for a Vietnam vet, I I would have probably stayed out on the road and stuff. Uh, those are ones that actually helped me out out quite a bit. All right, because they recognized it right off the bat that I had it, and they pushed they pushed for me getting help. Hmm. Well, and I know I both know, having been part of the you know being part of the trucking industry, that there are a number of vets probably even listening now uh, mm -hmm. who are on the road and who are struggling with PTSD, and so you know what you're giving to them. Uh, is is good information. Let me ask you, you shared also with me a little while back that coming out of the desert storm situation, uh, there were a couple times when you didn't feel you your life was of value and, and you were going to do something about that. Can you share that story with me, with us? Yes, with us? I, yes. I had a time, uh, I had just come home from the road Nobody was home, and I grabbed my shotgun, and I stuck it under my chin because I felt like I was a worthless piece of garbage and stuff, and my wife walked in on me. And she told my dad, who's a Korean vet, and then he told a friend of his that was a Vietnam vet, and the Vietnam vet basically came over, called me a coward, and that I was taking the coward's way out and all this, and he started preaching to me, and I mean, the man just he, every time, every every weekend when I was home or something, he was at my house preaching to me and stuff. And he he helped lead him and my wife helped lead me to the Lord, and I wound up accepting the Lord and in '97. And you know, it's been a pretty good experience since then. Now there's times that I still fall fall on on it and stuff and i just have to go to the lord in prayer and help have him help me get it out uh you share with us you were married before you went to desert storm or after yeah i was married after i got back is whenever i got married <laughs> hey ken um 
So you were married after you got back from Desert Storm. Yes. And uh, I want to talk about that, but we need to go to break here shortly. So when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about how that affected your marriage and, uh, and see what you were able to do about that as well. Uh, but for now, uh, we need to go to break. Uh, this is Trucker's Life Radio on TNCRadio.live, and we will be back in just a few minutes. You're listening to TNC Radio Live. Remember to tune into the Truckers Network Radio Show with Shelly Johnson weekdays at 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern. This info blog on TNC Radio Live is brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Mental health resources for truck drivers. Truck drivers are the backbone of America. They're the unsung heroes. Nearly every good consumed in the United States has been transported in a truck. Because of how challenging truck driving is, truck drivers often portray the image of being tough. Mental health is not a discussion that many truckers will have among each other. The truth is, truck drivers are human. They have their emotional and mental struggles, just like every other working American. The only difference is that truck drivers face unique factors that put them more at risk for depression and other serious mental health issues. According to the Transport Workers Union, one in five truck drivers has experienced mental health issues. Depression and anxiety are the top mental issues that truck drivers face. Mental health resources for truck drivers. With truck drivers spending more time on the road than at home, it can be difficult to get help for their mental health struggles. Now, thanks to modern day technology, truck drivers can get help right from their smartphones. Esper. Esper is a national behavioral health company with a mission to help people and organizations reach their full potential. Esper offers a continuum of behavioral health care from acute to chronic health conditions to leadership development, including fit to pass, a coaching program to assist professional drivers in maintaining good health and pass their DOT recertification physical exams. Better help. BetterHelp is the world's largest e-counseling platform. They have access to licensed, trained, experienced, and accredited psychologists, marriage and family therapists, clinical social workers, and board-licensed professional counselors. To get starters, take a quick questionnaire and BetterHelp will match you with a therapist that's right for you. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is a national network of local crisis centers that provides free and confidential emotional support to people in suicidal crisis or emotional distress 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Their number is 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-8255. Welcome back to Trucker's Life Radio with Ron Frazier, right here on TNCRadio.live. This is Trucker's Life Radio, and I am your host, Ron Frazier. Today I have with me Ken Eakins, who is a district manager for TFC Global in the Indianapolis, Indiana area. And Ken's been sharing his story about PTSD. And when we broke off before for a commercial break, uh, we left off talking a little bit about the time he was married, and we want to pick it up there. So, Ken, um, you were married after you came out of Desert Storm, or after Desert Storm. How, how did you, was your wife aware that you had these symptoms, uh, that you had signs of PTSD? Not at first. All right. Uh, we got married. It was uh, September 28th of 91. All right, so we met, we actually met a few days after I got back. She, my wife was actually my dad's secretary for a support group that he had started for us. And he introduced us. And three weeks later, I proposed to her. And five months later, we were married. And we, we've been married now 30 years. But... You know, we've had our rocky rocky roads and stuff, but at that time, we didn't know about the PTSD and stuff when we first met and stuff. Uh, we were more excited about ourselves and, you know, being together. And then later on down the road, 
the first one that actually told me was a friend of mine. Uh, he was a psychologist for the VA. Uh, he looked at me, he, and plus he was a Vietnam vet. He looked at me one day and he said, you got PTSD just looking at me. And I never said a word to him. But, uh, yeah, we met and, you know, over the years, we, we, we separated once because of it. And about a month and a half, two months later, we got, we, we, we started working things out and stuff. And it's been working since. And I have to say a lot of it is our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, because every time we get to the, get to our breaking points, instead of yelling and screaming at each other, we wind up talking and praying about it. Hmm. Well, those are two key things, uh, Ken. Uh, the idea of, of just stopping and, and talking and praying. I was going to ask you, you know, and and I know your wife personally. So, uh, how difficult was it for you guys to come to the reality that this was going to be a big issue in your life? Uh, probably not long after I actually started driving truck. Because I actually told her that I didn't want to be around anybody, or and I didn't, and I even told her at that time too that I didn't want to be around her because I was afraid of what I would do and stuff, and you know, so I'd rather just stay off by myself. Mm -hmm. And you know, so I'm I'm sitting there like I'm surprised she hadn't divorced me yet for some of the things I said to her during those time frames. And stuff, you know, because I I was pretty mean and rotten to her and my kids, and you know, and then as but like I said before, as I grew in my faith, I started seeing the things that I did wrong, and I just you know started earning that I wanted to be home with them and and be around them more because they are my family, you know, uh, and that was the that was one of the hardest things that I had to do was admit that I had that problem. Ken, you, 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 you spoke a minute ago about your kids. You know, it's one thing in a marriage relationship to deal with PTSD, but how did your kids deal with it? And, and you talked about this change that they saw. First of all, how did your kids deal with you having PTSD? Did they isolate themselves away from you? Did they... They 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 would stay away from me quite a bit. Uh, they'd get home, and if I was home, they'd go up to their rooms and stay in their rooms until I left, or at least unless it was dinner time and stuff, they'd come down to eat dinner, then go back to their rooms. Hmm. Ken, when did they see a change in you? Uh, you right after I quit driving, they start seeing the changes and stuff, and uh. You know, I wasn't I wasn't losing my temper as much and stuff. Uh, and then actually, my son he started standing up to me more as he grew older and stuff. He was standing up to me, and you know, uh, so you know, I thought he hated me and stuff when because of him standing up. But he he was standing up and telling me how I had to go get help and this and that. And, you know, so. Well, I bet that had to be pretty, maybe not so much hurtful, but really an eye opener for you for him to do that. Yes, it was. It was a big eye opener because, you know, here, here he is only like, I want to say, I think he was like 16, 17 years old. And whenever I get mad, he'd, he'd just stand up to me and, and we'd be chest to chest and nose to nose is going, you know, I'm ready to hit him and you know and he's got a, and for being that young he's he was pretty strong for for being that young and that's as skinny as he was <laughs> you know so so tell me Ken I've heard you say it a couple times that you, not only in your family but outside of your family uh people would look at you and say hmm you've got PTSD Mm -hmm. uh, but we need to share with our listeners, what are some of the red flags to look for in identifying someone who may be struggling with PTSD? What do they see that says, yep, 
he's struggling with PTSD. What are those red flags? What were they for you, and and what would you share with others? Yeah, yeah like the one gentleman that was a psychiatrist, when we, my dad had a pig roast when we came home. The only people I, I was there talking to is other vets and stuff. Uh, our kids that I grew up with, some of the kids that I grew up with, I wasn't talking with any of anybody else. I was just hanging out with them and stuff. Uh, and then the other thing, you know, they would, uh, the one when I'd go on, a, I rode, I ride bikes too, and I'd go on a poker run or something. And the other vet was, the other Vietnam vet was there and stuff. And I'd, I'd leave my wife by herself and I'd go, I'd go talk with other vets on these poker runs that were in combat and stuff. I wouldn't talk to anybody that wasn't. And we just, we just sat there and talk and they'd sit there and look, they go, you got PT. Why aren't you talking to some of these others? Some of these guys, you known for a long time. And they say, you, you've got PTSD if you ain't talking to them. Cause I told them I didn't want to talk to them. They weren't in my shoes. What do you mean by that, Ken? Why don't you explain that? What's you it know, mean to be in your shoes? Yeah, you know, like, cause I was in the military. I went to war and stuff, and they they didn't. They they stayed back. They you know uh, they didn't want to go in the military and stuff, and you know. So it was like I just you know at that point in my life, if you weren't if you weren't in the military or served in war, I didn't want nothing to do with you. And sometimes even a people that were in the military and they didn't go to war. I didn't want nothing to do with them neither. Hmm. So you were very selective to the people that you shared your story with and, and you talked about the PTSD thing with, hmm. uh, you know, let me ask you this for, you know, it's important not only for our professional drivers, but the general public uh, to be educated about PS, uh, PTSD why would they need to know why you know you're talking so much about an interaction and an interrelationship among veterans but why would it be important can for not only our professional drivers but the general public to be educated about PTSD yeah so because a lot of the public when when they when they see you and stuff and they they recognize that there's something wrong you know not to be afraid you know, talk to talk to you like a like a normal human being. Don't 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 just ignore them. You know, uh, and you know, like I I ignored it for years. Uh, other vets ignored ignored it for years and stuff until they till they hit rock bottom. Then they seek their help. You know, uh, but yeah, because people people without it, if they can recognize there's something wrong, they they avoid you. And you know we have to, we have to let them know, hey, we're not we're we don't have a disease that you can catch. This is some something that we have to deal with. And if you can help by talking with us normal, instead of in you know judging us and stuff, then we can accept you. Well, Ken, I want to pick that up here when we come back from break because you made some good, uh, you gave us some good information that I think we need to pick up on. Uh, but we do need to go and take another break. And so this is Trucker's Life Radio on TNCRadio.live, and we will be right back after this break. Hey, drivers, did you hear music on TNCRadio.live that you really liked? Or maybe you heard us interview an author of a book you'd like to read or listen to. You can get the books, music, and other products you hear about by going to our website at www.tncradio.live and clicking on the shopping cart. Welcome back to Trucker's Life Radio with Ron Frazier right here on tncradio.live. Welcome back. This is Trucker's Life Radio on TNCRadio.live. And we're speaking with Ken Eakins, who is the uh, district manager for TFC Global in the Indianapolis, in the Illinois area. And uh, Ken's been sharing his story about PTSD 
and how that has been part of his life as uh, a married man, as a father, and as a trucker. So uh, we're going to pick up where we left off before break before. Uh, Ken, you shared a little bit about the community and the importance of them being aware of, of guys who are struggling with PTSD. Uh, but I have a question for you. Throughout this interview, you have talked about the fact that most military guys will not talk to uh, people outside of the military. So what hope does the community have uh, to be able to communicate with our veterans and, and many who are drivers uh, who are struggling with this issue? You know, uh, there's a, some people that have actually started organizations and stuff that can help get people together, military and civilians and stuff. They get them together. And uh, like right now we have a, a like veterans court here in Indiana where if a, if a veteran does anything, now this is a civilian lady that started it and she actually has civilians that run it and stuff and they they come in and step in where veterans are having issues and they have to go to court and stuff and they get them put in, put in her court so that and she she turns around all right your ptsd is what's causing this let's get you help you so know, she doesn't, she huh? doesn't condemn them right out of the gate uh, no. for the cause and she tries to find them a solution is that yeah. correct yes and that, that's the biggest thing is people not, they don't need to be afraid of us. They need to look at us that we're human. We have an issue. And if you can recognize the issue, just, just talk to them, you know, at a, at a calm voice. Don't raise your voice or anything. Just talk to them calmly and, you know, uh, just be nice and courteous to them. And how, how, you know, you are a chaplain. Yes. And so when you run into a guy who comes across your path via the trucking community and, and he is dealing with the PTSD problem, mm -hmm. how do you handle him? What do you say to him? How do you deal with it? You know, I just introduced myself as, you know, Chaplain Eakins and, you know, we I sit there and talk to him a little bit, and I tell him, "Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Desert Storm vet and stuff." And we, you know, we because we can recognize our if you're you were in the military and stuff. And we just sit there and start talking, and eventually we bring I bring up the Bible and stuff, and we, you know, we start talking about things like being slow to anger and patience and stuff, and you know, and you know, and it, it seems to calm them down. And but the biggest thing is just getting that initial conversation going. So okay, you get you get that conversation going, but what is you know what do you tell them once they leave you? What advice do you give to them? I mean, well, I, usually, I usually tell them you know to pray to God when you feel the anger coming on and. You know, ask ask for his help to deal with issues if you feel an issue coming on or something. You know, everything you know, everything you do, you 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 ask God for His guidance and His help is what I tell them. Anytime you know, but like I said, anytime they feel that they're getting angry or something, just stop, walk away, pray to God, then go back. Ken, have you ever had anybody who was? really on the verge of uh, being in a really bad situation and, um, you know, they came across your path at, you know, one of your locations. Um, have you ever had somebody so desperate uh, that you were probably their last uh, last avenue? I, that that actually, actually happened not too long ago. A gentleman came in and he he sat there – he was getting very mad, mostly at his dispatcher and stuff, because uh, they kept giving him a runaround and stuff, and he was telling me how he was ready to go. I'm like, hey, calm down, bud. Calm down. Take it easy. Let's pray and stuff. And we sat there and talked and 
finally, when he left, you know, uh, uh, you know, because I told him, you don't know what that dispatcher is going through right now. You know, she, he or she may have a lot of other things on her on their plate other than just you and stuff. And you know, you see that. You know, um, I've had dispatchers before. Oh, I just lost that load. Can you wait a few minutes more? You know, and apparently she she or he wasn't telling them that stuff. You know, they they pulled that load from us and. You know, after they give it to him, and he was just go, getting ready to go off. And I'm like, "Hey, just take your, take it easy. Just think of the, what they're going through too." You know, and we prayed, and you know, and he was feeling better. Ken, from your wife's perspective, you know, what was she feeling? I mean, uh, you know, she she's in this ministry with you, and, and yeah. she's this too. You know. Yeah. I don't. She, she felt like I didn't love her. She uh, felt that I didn't want to be around. You know, not being around her and stuff. She felt that I didn't love her, and uh, she kept. She was always wondering what she did wrong to me, why I didn't want to be around her and stuff, and you know. And I just, I, I always just wouldn't say nothing. Hmm. Ken, what do you what do you tell your your drivers who come into you about dealing with the issue with their family, making their family aware of their problems and needs? I mean, what do you suggest to them? Because I'm sure many of them only react; they don't respond when they get home. And so, you know, how do you encourage them to be, you know, more responsive to their family? in light of their circumstance as opposed to just reacting to something they didn't like? You know, I try to tell them, you know, before you react, talk. You know, don't yell, don't don't do anything like that. You talk. Anytime you feel that there's something going on, you talk about it. Pray about it with your families. Don't just react. When you react, there's consequences more more consequences than than what what you're going to want to deal with because that that's what's happening with one of my neighbors right now is he reacted without thinking and talking about it and but he's he wasn't a truck driver and driver and stuff but uh but that's the thing is you have to t sit down talk talk with them before you react you know, I, I think we need to make our listeners aware that PS, uh, PTSD doesn't just affect uh, the vets. We're focusing on the vets because that is where it heavily is prevalent. Uh, but it affects people who have been in traumatic situations. Um, you know, 9-11 and, and other situations uh, created a great deal of PTSD. Mm -hmm. And so as I listen to you, and you've used this term over and over again, just talk, you know, what is it about just talking? Why is it we're not saying, hey, um, you know, you need to go see this guy or, hey, let me call up this person, uh, this doctor, or let me get you this help. What is it about just talking that uh, has a positive effect for someone, not only a vet, anyone struggling with PTSD? You know, one is because I'm not a licensed counselor. I tell them to talk to their spouse and stuff. Uh, the biggest thing is to just talk about it and talk with them is because a lot of people with PTSD, they don't want to talk. They just want, they either walk away, they storm and stuff sit down and talk about it and let your family know what's going on don't keep bottles up inside of you because that you know for years i kept everything bottled up and when i when i lost it i lost it you know and i'll admit you know i've actually got holes in my a wall right now that i haven't fixed yet and i look at it and it's just a reminder of what i used to be well, we want to pick this up, Ken, with you here in a few minutes again. But we've, once again, we've got to go to break.
And so we're going to do that, and then we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more about what you just concluded with. So uh, this is uh, Truckers Life Radio and TNC Radio Live. Uh, we're glad you're with us. We're glad you're being part of this conversation, and we hope you continue to join us after the break. This blog on TNC Radio Live is brought to you by the Truckers Network at app. The Truckers Network. Net. Health tips every trucker should follow. When you live your life on the road, it can be very easy to fall into an unhealthy lifestyle. This is the case when it comes to most truck drivers. Being on the road for weeks at a time can take a toll on one's health. The lack of exercise, sleep, and access to a balanced diet are all common health hazards for truckers. Taking care of your health is not only important for your well-being, it's also important for a successful career in the trucking industry. Here's some tips every trucker should take into consideration while traveling on the road. Eat healthy. Although it may be more convenient to eat fast food or grab something quick at a gas station, try stopping at a grocery store and picking up some fresh fruits and veggies. Some other healthy options are protein bars, dried fruits, nuts, and make sure to drink plenty of water. If your truck has an auxiliary power unit or power inverter, look into getting a portable stove, crock pot, or microwave. This will make eating healthy much easier, and it also helps save money. Be sure to be aware of your company's policies for cooking in your truck. Exercise. Finding the time to exercise can be quite a challenge when you spend 10 or more hours a day driving. Finding a little time to exercise each day can improve your physical and mental health. Walking, running, pack some running shoes, and take a 30-minute walk or jog each day. It's an inexpensive option for exercising. Work out in your cabin. Setting up a workout routine to do in your cabin is a convenient way to keep yourself healthy. You don't even need workout equipment. Find time to implement these workouts in your daily routine. Push-ups, planks, sit-ups, tricep dips, stretching. Stretching can help avoid back pain. It's important for truckers to make stretching a part of their daily workout routine. Back bends, front bends, side bends, neck stretch. Sleep. Getting a good night's sleep is essential for good health. Driving can become dangerous if you're not getting an appropriate amount of sleep. Studies say that most healthy adults need between 7 and 9 hours of sleep each night. Follow these steps to a happier and healthier sleep lifestyle. Stick to a sleep schedule. Sleep on a comfortable mattress and pillow. Avoid alcohol and caffeine close to bedtime. Turn off all electronics before bed. Mind. Taking care of your mental health should be as important to your physical health. Truck driving can be boring. Keep your mind alert and fresh by listening to music while driving or tncradio.live. This blog on tncradio.live was brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Hi, this is Bill Waldrop. Want to learn more about trains? Join us Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central for The Train Station. It's right here on tncradio.live. Welcome back to Trucker's Life Radio with Ron Frazier, right here on TNCRadio.live. Welcome back to Trucker's Life Radio on TNCRadio.live. I'm your host, Ron Frazier, and we're here talking with Ken Eakins about the subject of PTSD. Uh, Ken is a former truck driver, a veteran, and this is Veterans Week. And by the way, we honor all of our guys out there who are veterans who have fought for our country. Uh, we appreciate you. We want you to know that. And uh, so we're spending a little bit of time talking about an important subject. And we've asked Ken to share his story, which he's been doing. And so we're going to go back to it. And so, Ken, you talked about the holes in your wall. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I get that. I can see that being a, <laughs> and a, a reminder, I should say, uh, mm -hmm. of things past. I'm not sure my wife would let me leave the holes in the wall. <laughs> Yeah, she uh, yells at me to fix it all the time. Yeah, I bet. Maybe it's not such a good reminder for her. But uh, anyhow, I want to get back to something. Uh, you've given us, like I said, some great information. Uh, but tell me, what should a professional driver, and as we shared before, it's just not the drivers, just not the veterans, uh, or anyone do that is struggling with this issue? You know, we talked about our ability to educate the community. Uh, our ability to help them understand the red flags and to know that most PSD uh, people who struggle with it 
And this is both men and women, by the way, uh, who struggle with this issue, uh, don't want to talk about it. And so, you know, what should someone do who is struggling with this issue? You know, they're sitting there in their truck alone. It's really building up a boiler pot within them. Um, or they're in a, in a difficult situation at home, and uh, that seems to be surfacing. Give me something, uh, Ken, that uh, they can take to the bank. What is it they should do? Well, one thing is they have to admit that they have the issue, all right? Then, then they need to find out if they, you know, get with some other vets to see what they did, go get help for it. Uh, the VA has actually started up a lot of programs to help veterans with PTSD. Um, a lot of your civilian courts have actually have set up things and programs for veterans uh, with it. We actually, here in Indiana, Northwest Indiana, we have a place called the Vet Center. They have actually actual licensed counselors in there to help you with that and stuff. Uh, you know, so you can go to the VA about it. You can go to, uh, if you have a vet center and don't want to go to the VA ho- clinic or hospital about it, you can go to the vet center and they have groups that gather and everybody talks about, about their experiences and their issues with it and stuff. Uh, you know, it's, all, it's like, a, like a big old counseling session with a lot of people. So your point here is there are a lot of options and these guys shouldn't be out there trying to struggle with this alone. No, they shouldn't. Tell me, tell me, you know, you've got a driver. Now I'm coming at you from the chaplaincy end of this. You've got a driver. He's on the road three weeks out of the, out of the month. Um, And for the most part, he's not stopping very long anywhere as we know. Um, how, how should he go about it? Yeah, th- that's like because we are there. We the chat. We have chaplains all over, all over the place, and you know, you can talk to the chaplains. You know, as, as individuals and stuff, and you know, because when I was driving truck, I used to stop in Lodi all the time, Toledo. All right. Uh, Harrisburg and stuff I would stop it and I, my first place I would actually go to end the day is I'd go to the chapel to end my day instead of going inside take it, taking off my frustrations at a waitress or something I'd go in and just talk with a chaplain one on one and in, instead of taking, out, taking it out on somebody else I'd just t- talk to them because you know you're not you're not going to go off on a chaplain, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. I'm just and I'm giving a little bit of a laugh there because that was me, you know me because I, I'm like I ain't going off on him. He 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 can he he can curse me with God. <laughs> I've never quite heard it put that way, uh, Ken. But okay, uh, but that is that does protect the chaplain, I guess. But anyways. <laughs> You know, the guy's on the road. He, you know, he needs to talk. The chaplains, I'm sure you guys are trained and are being trained to deal Mm -hmm. with that issue. Uh, But one thing we need to be aware of is that PTSD may not be their only problem. And I think you could share that, you know, there may be some other addictions uh, that are, you know, related to PTSD or the effects of that it's having on this person or that person's life, Mm -hmm. Um, or it may not be, it may be just their way of escaping uh, the PTSD situation. So what what have you seen in relationship to other issues that drivers and and people in general have done uh, to, to deal with their PTSD? Well, I've, I've actually see guys, they get out, they have a bicycle that they keep on their trucks with them, and to get their frustrations out, they go ride, ride a bike four or five miles, or they go jogging for a while, they do exercising in a truck stop and stuff to relieve their stress. Now, 
a lot a lot of people are doing that. Uh, I know when I was driving, they had all, a lot of your truck stops. They had video games and pinball machines where you'd see drivers in there taking and shoving these machines around and playing them and stuff, and 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 they were playing them pretty violently. It looked like sometimes. But, you know, so they were taking their, they take their, there's people that take them out, take their frustrations out differently in different ways and mm -hmm. stuff. But, uh, you know, my biggest thing is always seek help with it. Always. Don't, don't try to do it yourself. Ken, what would you say in the last few minutes that we have, when you've got a professional driver, man or woman, or you've got someone who is struggling with PTSD, um, what should they look at or recognize as, hey, wait a minute, this is getting way out of control. Not just I have a problem, but this is getting way out of control and I need to do something about it now. You know, my biggest thing is if you see that you have that, if you're at that point in your life, get into a... VA clinic or hospital and to, and let them know, hey, I am having issues. I need to talk to a psychiatrist now. You know, and a lot of them, they have, they have them available 24-7, even if you just have to call them. All right. They actually even have a crisis hotline, the VA does, uh, so that you can call and get the help that you need right then and there. Hmm. Uh, Ken, we want to thank you for being with us and, on this program and, and for all the information that you, you know, so graciously shared about your life. And uh, hopefully that will be impactful for others, for our listeners and their family uh, as they listen to this program. And uh, we want them to know that, um, they're not alone in, in their school. So, Ken, thank you very much. All right. You're welcome. Again, once again, we want to thank our listeners for joining us on our program. We want to remind you that we can be reached at Trucker's Life at tncradio.live, or if you'd like help with a struggle you're having in your life or family, or you just want to share your story with us, uh, you can uh, contact us at that email address or at 717-426-9977. Uh, we also want to remind you that there is a national suicide prevention hotline that just doesn't deal with suicide. If you go there, it will talk about uh, directing, talk about our veterans. And so there's a veterans crisis line uh, as part of that. And that number is 1-800-273 8255. Again, that is 1-800-273-8255. Hey, Ron, Tom Kelly here. You know, it's sometimes uh, can be a little nerve wracking to dial a number like that. So to set expectations, if you dial the number, this is what you'll hear. You have reached the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, also servicing the Veterans Crisis Line. If you are in emotional distress or suicidal crisis or concerned about someone who might be, we're here to help. Para Español, oprime número dos. If you are a U.S. military veteran or current service member or are calling about one, please press 1 now to speak with the Veterans Crisis Line. So I just wanted you guys to hear what happens when you call that number. Thank you, Ron and Ken. That was an important subject. Let's review once more the symptoms of PTSD. Many people develop stronger physical reactions after experiencing a traumatic event. Now, usually they subside in a few days or weeks. For some, however, they may last longer and be more severe. These signs and symptoms can be grouped into three areas. Number one, re-experiencing symptoms. If you re-experience having flashbacks that include physical symptoms, such as a racing heartbeat, if you have a number of bad dreams, and if you're having frightening thoughts, and this keeps going on, not just for a few days, not just for a couple of weeks, but an extended period of time, 
Those are symptoms. Other symptoms, the, the avoidance symptoms. Avoiding places or objects that remind the person of the experience that they went through. Uh, that could be a symptom. That's, again, especially if this lasts a long time. Feeling emotionally numb for an extended period of time. Losing interest in activities that you used to enjoy. That could be a symptom. And there are hyperarousal symptoms. Being easily startled, feeling tense or on edge, having difficulty sleeping, having angry outbursts. Again, not just for a couple of days or even a couple of weeks, but something that's going on and on like this. You can reach help at the Veterans Crisis Hotline. Okay, that number is 1-800-273-8255. Five, five. That's 1-800-273-TALK. When you call the number, this is what you'll hear. You have reached the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, also servicing the Veterans Crisis Line. If you are in emotional distress or suicidal crisis or concerned about someone who might be, we're here to help. Para Español, oprime número dos. If you are a U.S. military veteran or current service member or are calling about one, please press 1 now to speak with the Veterans Crisis Line. If you're not comfortable with talking with somebody directly, you can text them at 838-255. That's 83-TALK. You can also go online to www.veteranscrisisline.net. That's www veteranscrisisline.net and click on the chat button and connect with somebody online. This support is free. It's confidential. It's available 24-7 and it's for all veterans, all service members, National Guard and Reserve, and their family members and friends. So don't hesitate. Again, that number is one 800 273-TALK. Please send feedback and questions to truckerslife at tncradio.live. Stay tuned. Finding the right health care plan and insurance agent can be a challenge. Truck driving can be a dangerous job and drivers expose themselves to unique health risks. Health insurance is an expensive but necessary expense for truck drivers. It helps protect them from unexpected high medical costs. Although truck drivers should have a health plan, many don't. Some trucking companies offer health plans for truck drivers, but if you're an owner-operator or an independent contractor, you might have to find your own health insurance policy. The Truckers Network proudly partners with the Health Plan Partner to help our members learn about the options they have for health insurance. The Health Plan Partner is dedicated to helping members of the Truckers Network find and learn about what's available to them in the marketplace. Since 1985, the Health Plan Partner has helped their clients figure out the health insurance maze we're in. Here are six tips from the Health Plan Partner for finding the right health plan and agent for truck drivers. Review your options with an experienced agent that specializes in health plans and can guide you in the right direction, even if it's not a plan they offer. Determine your budget. There are options for any budget, but the adage is true. You get what you pay for, so beware. Have a list of your doctors, medications, and any health history. Some plans do require a health history. Review your current plan annually, if you have one, to see if there are better options and rates available. Plans can change constantly. Have the plans explained to you in detail and ask a lot of questions and role play various situations. Quite a few times we only find out what the plan doesn't cover when we need it. Again, find an agent you feel comfortable with. You need to be able to trust them and call for guidance and questions anytime. With over 25 years of experience, Health Plan Partner wants to help truckers find the right health insurance plan. Be sure to catch the Truckers Network radio show with your host, Shelley Johnson, weekdays at 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern, right here on tncradio.live.